Now we are going to take a look at our second variance, which is the sales volume variance. So going back to our example, we have already done, uh, we have already finished the calculation of sales price variance. Uh, let's collapse this and let's open up sales volume variance. So what is sales volume variance? Sales volume variance is really the difference between actual and budgeted quantity. As price variance was the difference between actual and budgeted price, sales volume variance is simply the difference between actual and budgeted quantity. Um, let's calculate that and then we'll discuss this further. So we can simply, again, link our actual quantity based on the data that we already have. So we know our actual quantity is um, here. So after linking, I can just drag down. Uh, we can also use copy and paste to keep the links there. So as you can see uh, for bananas, the link is to the cell reference C6. And uh, uh, similarly, we have copied all the uh, actual quantities down. For budget, we will do the same thing. As you can see, budget quantity by fruit or byproduct. And this is our budget quantity. Now again, we are going to calculate quantity difference. And if you recall from our previous session, I said we will use, we'll always use the actual quantity or actual prices first, and then budget quantity or budget prices second. So you can see the difference here. Uh, as an example, you can see our actual apple sold is 550 kgs more than uh, what was budgeted. This is where the question comes in, that what is the basis of calculation you are using? We could have used selling price, but remember we are trying to explain the change in profit, the 6,115. So if we are trying to explain the change in profit, we will be using budgeted profit per kg. And uh, one more thing here is that um, we are using budgeted profit, not actual profit per kg. And if you recall from one of our earlier sessions, I mentioned that we are, that we are not covering the uh, changes in cost or cost variances here, but this is the proof where um, it does not matter whether there is a change in cost or not, because we will always be using in our calculation, we will always be using the budgeted profit and not actual profit per kg. Even when we are comparing with prior year or any other benchmark, if for example, we are comparing with prior year, we are going to use prior year profit per kg, not actual for this year. And similarly for benchmark, we'll be using the benchmark profit per kg, right? So it does not matter if the cost changed from our reference point to our actual. So in this case, we already have the budgeted profit per kg. Again, I'm going to, I'm going to simply link it. You can see this is the budget section and we have budgeted profit here. And you can copy this down. And just to um, just to highlight one more point, or just to confirm, as I said, we are not going to see any changes in cost per kg. So we are not seeing any variances in the cost. Our actual cost per kg is the same uh, as our budgeted cost per kg. The only difference is the actual quantity changes, which results in different costs uh, between actual and budget uh, and budget. Okay, so going back to our sales volume variance, we have now almost everything we need. We have the budgeted profit, we have the quantity difference. And again, sales volume variance will simply be a multiplication of our budgeted profit and our quantity uh, and our difference in quantities. So again, I'm going to drag this down. And you see our total sales volume variance is uh, 2760. Now at this point, you should do a check. If you are at this point in your calculation, you should do your first check, which is going back to our sales overview. As you can see, your total sales variance is the sum of your sales price variance and your sales volume variance. So if I add the two variances that we just calculated, that should actually match our uh, total profit variance. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to expand our sales price variance. And if I just select on this uh, cell, which is the total sales price variance, scroll down, press control key and press and select this button. Exactly. You can see here in Excel, the sum is $6,115. Um, 
which matches exactly the number we are trying to explain. So I'm going to do a quick reconciliation here. Um, uh, this is the total sales variance. Uh, we know by fruit what is the sales price variance and sales volume variance. So if I look at sales price, we just calculated it right here. Um, we select this. If we look at sales volume, we calculated it here. And the total of the variance is this. Sum of the two, right? And we can also check this now. So we can check this against our original data. So if I take a look at this, uh, this cell total variances minus, if I scroll up and look at the data here, you see here, this was calculated based on actual and budget data. And this matches exactly. So if I select all of this, yeah, you can copy one cell at a time, or you can copy multiple cells at a time. So I select all four columns and then I drag them down. This will copy all the formulas and you can see the total check is zero, which means all of our variances are calculated accurately. Now you can see in a, in a snapshot, you can quickly see what's causing um, the variances. Uh, overall, it's 6,115. The biggest one is uh, coming from oranges. And even within oranges, you can say it's really volume, right? Uh, it's 3,925 um, dollars that are coming from volume. Um, there is uh, favorable variance from grapes, mostly from the price, the, the price increase, and to some extent from volume also because the quantity increased. But we have not fully understood volume variance yet. And that's why um, in the overview of sales variance, you see that sales volume variance is further subdivided into sales mix and sales quantity variance. For the time being, we know that um, uh, we have explained our sales price and sales volume variance, which is 6,115. Just to uh, reinforce the point, uh, remember we were trying to explain variance in profit. We were not trying to explain variance, explain variance in sales dollar at this point, although we, we can. The only key difference between the two would be what is the basis of calculation. And in the basis of calculation, we said we are going to use profit as a basis. Had we used sell selling price as the basis, we would have been able to explain the 8,905. And we will do that, don't worry about it. Once we set up this file, it will just be a copy and paste and just changing a few um, inputs, few key inputs, and all your calculations will be done automatically. So don't worry about that. But I think it's really important that you understand this concept. Um, and once you understand that, it's so easy to calculate those variances. So well, we are done with our first layer of uh, variance calculation. You should be feeling very happy, very excited that you can easily explain now the total change uh, by price and volume in terms of dollars already, right? Think about it. If you go back and you know apply this to your organization, your business, wherever you are, you can tell exactly what's going on as far as your total uh, drop in profit or total gap in profit is coming from. This is great, exciting. Let's keep going and let's try to explain this even further.